more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Carl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Evening. 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 A bit loud now. I'm going to need longer arms. I could do some Mr. Tickle arms. Anyway, um, welcome to episode 34 of the Talking Shop podcast. Um, we're delighted to be welcomed by um, Youth Cup final winning defender and club ambassador, yes. uh, Andy Cousins. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks very much for coming on. No uh, there's young Ben here. Hello. Uh, there's old Ben uh, knocking about on a catamaran in Somalia because he's become a pirate. <laughs> uh, and we're joined by Raggy as well. How are we doing? Yeah, very good, mate. How are you? Yeah, good. Good. Very good. Uh, yeah, so Ben's still um, jet setting somewhere. Uh, not Somalia. I was joking, obviously. Um, and he'll be back, I think, next week, possibly. I don't I, care. I think I'm just so. sick of seeing pictures of Bermuda yeah. or <laughs> wherever he's else. Loading it up. Glo- gloating from. So we're live on uh, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, and various other things. Um, so please get involved uh, give us your opinion tonight we're going to get into a little bit about Andy's career the Youth Cup final back in 93 and we'll get into the big debate of um, should the 93 uh, Cup winning side be more recognised than the Man United side that they actually did defeat in the final not only defeat but outplayed outclassed and smashed them about uh, so we'll get into that and then we'll get into a little bit about injury situation any crazy transfer rumours because we are coming to our silly season the curse of talking shot <sighs> the curse of talking <laughs> shot which is becoming more and more like a real thing um, we'll see how Mickey Peaker's guest is getting on in the predictor uh, and if he carries on with him we're going to can this section cause <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to no honest, guess we're shocking at it um, get into Bristol City uh, and that'll be about it so if you want to get involved please uh, comment on Facebook if you've got any questions for Andy we've got a couple uh, please get involved and yeah We'll see. So I think best place to start, Andy, is um, with yourself. So in your career at Leeds, so Leeds fan as a boy, or yeah, it was. Uh, I always came down, and um, you know, I can, f- I can remember my first game coming down. I'm watching Liverpool versus Leeds. It must have been in the mid '80s or something like that. Um, but yeah, you know, it was uh, it was a dream come true for me to to come and play for the boyhood team, which I, I support as a kid, and you know, obviously still working for them now, which is a, a great pleasure. Um, you know, to come on and make your debut is 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 all you ever want to do as a as a young kid. You know, playing in front of thirty eight, forty thousand people, um, it's a it's a great experience, and uh, you know, one nobody can take away from you, um, and it's one that a hell of a lot of people want to do. So, it's one of them things which you've got to be immensely proud of, and uh, you know, for me personally, I'm, I'm immensely proud to have worn the white shirt. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what is it like that as a kid? I mean, obviously. Leeds fan all my life I'm sure Young Ben yeah, yeah. and Raggy none of us have ever flirted with another team and then decided to change to Leeds um, <laughs> like, like a lot of people do um, but I mean what what is that like to be a fan first and then getting you know getting your chance at Leeds I mean the only chance I can really sort of associate my son got picked up by Leeds Academy and had six weeks at Leeds and um, he's a big Leeds fan and I was proud to take him up to the Academy but you know I didn't do the pushy parent thing but at the age of seven you could see like the twinkle in his eye a little bit and he, he couldn't wait to tell people that <coughs> I got to throw a parch on a Friday in our train so I mean what's it like to get signed to the academy it was um, it was a di- bit different in our day to be honest because you know in our day it was you, you only got signed at 14 15 year old so you played like Sunday league football up until that point and um, we used to go for training sessions between you know in school holidays and things and we were always obviously seen as the players of Leeds United and then there's people coming on trial all the time so it was it was a weird one really because I think at, at 15 you're playing Sunday League football for Leeds United against Sheffield United against you know the local teams around here Bradford and and things and um, I don't think I ever thought that I wasn't ever going to get taken on it was a bit strange in that sense um, I always felt really comfortable and and the way we got told was a uh, you know we got a letter literally through the post and that's how we found out if we got an apprenticeship or not and uh, right. it was um, you know that was. I came home from school and the letter was there and my mum said there's a letter there from Leeds United and opened it and you know I can remember the emotions of myself then was well, I know I've got an apprenticeship so it'll be fine now <laughs> I never thought of anything different I never thought that that was never going to be the case and um, you know fortunately for me it, it, it was the case I got the apprenticeship and came down on me £29 a week um, you know first year apprenticeship and uh, a baptism of fire on the first day it was the hardest day ever of training I've ever had it was hey. ridiculous um, 
you know, but loved it. It was, you know, it was your job. You came in at nine o'clock every morning and you were you were kind of generally leaving at three, four, five o'clock, depending yeah. on how you did on your jobs and if they wanted to discipline you for anything, you know, which yeah. doesn't happen anymore now with uh, with a lot of these kids. Um, you know, we had, we had our jobs to do after training and, um, you know, it was a great laugh. You know, it really was. Um, you know, and the same thing, you know, I, I started playing reserve football and got into first team football and, you know, the kind of, the rocks kind of, started hit a little bit I suppose and my career started you know wavering a little bit when uh, you know when I when I got into the first team side of it because I think you've, you've got three parts to, a, to being a professional footballer you've got one where you know you, it's a it's a it's a joy to go and play you know then you've got another bit where it becomes a job and you've got to pay your mortgage and you've got yeah. to pay you know your families and whatever and you've got to you know you've got to live you know suddenly so it's a living and then I think then a lot of footballers now they'll come out of that other end and it's not a living anymore it's back yeah. to that being a kid again because money's no object yeah. so I think there's three kind of ways you can look at football and um, you know it's the biggest pleasure is, is obviously making your debut and getting out there on the on the football pitch and my second biggest thing was obviously scoring for Leeds and um, playing for England and under 21s as well at the same time it's you know it's something as, as I say you can't really take away and you know the, I played you know I think it was about 40 games altogether for Leeds you know played in Europe played in the Champions League side of things and um, as it was then and um you know, it, it, a great experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> who were the manager at the time when you signed? So football-wise, it was uh, first team-wise was Howard Wilkinson, um, and Mick Hennigan was was the assistant manager, and then uh, gorgeous George came in, um, <laughs> and uh, with David O'Leary, and you know, I, I started that season. I, I actually got brought in at the start of that season, um, and by Howard Wilkinson before he got the sack, and he just said that you know the three people he wanted in midfield that, that season was me, Mike Ford and, and Lee Boyer and we were kind of his first choices and you know we started the season at Derby away and we had Ian Rush start made his debut and we had Lee Sharp make his debut and Ian Hart was playing that day as well um, or me, Ford we had, a, we had a quite a young team and how would Hawkins under a bit of pressure you know from the Villa Cup final he was, in, yeah. he was under a bit of pressure and I think that you know that kind of influenced a little bit you know you look at the, you know, the kids in 90, 92 the call them from Man United, which obviously are ninety three ones which we beat, which we, I know we're going on to later <laughs> on. Got to get that one in. Um, but you look at that and you think, you know, somebody's, you know, that saying of you can never win anything with kids. And I think if we'd have been given a bit of an opportunity, I think we we could have gone on and done quite a bit. To be perfectly honest with you, with the with the caliber of player we had. Um, and then George came in. He, you know, he got the sack and. George came in and I played the first eight or nine games under George Graham and we played against Arsenal and I got beat up by Patrick Vieira. Um, no other word for it. It was a bit of a shambles, I have to say, go into the game because Rod Wallace was, his uh, wife was pregnant and she was, we had to stop halfway to the to the ground to because he had to get off and get back off to Southampton to see his baby <laughs> born. Right. So off he went. Next thing was Ian Hart's playing centre forward. We had nine man markers on the pitch. Um, <laughs> Paul Shepherd came in and played. I think that was his debut as well in midfield with me. And, and you know, and we, as I say, I'm man marking Patrick Vieira in his first year, and he is, um, as we as we've seen, possibly the best centre midfielder you've we've ever had in the Premier League. Um, and even say now, him and Roy Keane, I think were miles in front of everybody. And even so, to this point, um, with the kind of players they were and he just destroyed me for 45 minutes <laughs> and that was my career over at Leeds United literally I was sub the next game at, at um, up at Middlesbrough and uh, I, you know that was George just shipped us all off and we all trained on our own in the corner with Ian Rush and a few others and uh, we were in the bomb squad and um, <laughs> I've actually heard this story you know before. yeah we were in the bomb squad and we, we did our own little things and you know Rushy kind of looked after us we you know right. if we went out on a on a Wednesday night altogether, we had to be in Thursday morning to have breakfast, and we we train hard on Thursday morning. Um, it became a regular thing. Did that one, and uh, you know we, um, yeah, the career itself from Leeds' point of view kind of kind of went downhill from there. And the way I got told by George was, you know, I was only young, so I was 21, I think. I'd had a couple of trials. I'd had a trial out of in Rapid Vienna, which was kind of all sorted and just didn't get over the line at the last minute um, everything was done everything was you know all my agents who were working for me all disappeared and I had one agent who we think just went in and asked for more money and that got um, that got blown up the next day basically um, and then I nearly went to Osasuna which was very very close as well and ended up coming back to pre-season at Leeds and George basically came in and said look we've got to offer you a contract he's getting undressed at this point 
uh, <laughs> as well. What about Luther's contract? You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's literally getting undressed in the in the manager's office. Um, I get called in there, and he's like, you know, we've got to offer you a contract, but you never play for the club again. You'll never play for, re for for the reserves. You'll never play for the first team. So there's no point in you signing it. But we have to offer you it because you're the age which you are, and we want some money for you. So I had no option. Um, and then. Uh, I had two clubs came in from which was Blackpool and, and uh, Carlisle and ended up choosing Carlisle with, with a very good team up there and uh, a good manager but then again the manager got the sack and uh, I had a uh, I can't swear on this show can I? I can't swear, yeah, on, you this can. Can. Yeah. I can swear on this show yeah. well, an absolute arse of a chairman <laughs> called Michael Knighton and right. um, we uh, we didn't get on from day one uh, literally so um, we uh, he sacked Mervyn after six games and then we just we battled for 18 months literally um, together you know just very unprofessional we had a great team you know you look at the team which we had at Carlisle in the time was going off a little bit we had Roy Delap you know we had Matt Janssen we had a guy called Paul Boateng we had Owen Archdeacon who would come from Scotland um, a guy called Seven Punavati who came from PSG we had a, we had a really good team but we just had a chairman who just wanted to run the team and um, you know it's a, it's a sad state of affairs but yeah you know the lead side of it it's fantastic yeah, I mean what's it like uh Obviously, just going back a little bit, you know, a team you've supported forever, you, you know, you, you sort of seen your career take a, a real sharp upturn to playing in the Premier League against, you know, Patrick Vieira, we've mentioned, to then suddenly it's sort of dashed away, with, you know, is there any ill feeling there towards? Obviously, um, I think when I finished playing football, I think I, I fell out of love with the game. Um, you know, I wasn't bothered about watching it. Um, I was unemployed for a year. Um, pretty much trying to get a job and it's very difficult when you get to that point so yeah you kind of fall out of love with it but then you know it drags it back in it's um you know we always say you know as ex-players we it's a family down at Leeds and you know it is a very family family orientated club and you know behind the scenes there's still that family orientations there and you know every Saturday we go into a game and we have such a laugh together um reminiscing about old times old stories you know you've got Norman onto there you've got you know, Peter Lorimer, you know, he's there now as well. We've got Stevie Hodge in there, who's, who's got loads of stories about Forrest and Cluffy and, and things. Mel Sterling's just hilarious. <laughs> and prediction-wise, you never take any, anything he says, because um, he never, oh, ever, wait a minute. When he's ever, getting on as a guest. He never, <laughs> ever <laughs> wins anything, which is a running joke. It's been two and a half years, and he's still not won anything on a Saturday. Um, but, it, you know, it's great fun, and, you know, we still got that family feeling. The, the, the Legends Club, which is there as well, we've got Don Matteo coming in, we've got Lee Boyer coming in, we've Hartie coming in, we've got, we've got a lot of the Paul Robinsons being, there's a lot of the lads come in a lot, um, bring the families in, and it's just great to see them, and, you know, it's as if you've never left, um, yeah. you know, and it's a great experience, and I think that that's the big thing with Legion United, is that family club and that family orientation which you've got, which people from outside a little bit don't see, um, but for the ex-players and things, it's it's a fantastic experience, and you know, for me to play and to have played with a shirt and played in front of that many people in front of, you know, um, on Ellen Road, uh, the only downside I've never scored at Ellen Road. Um, that was my only only regret. It's um, all right, none of us three. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's, um, it, it's just a great experience, and it, you know, it's as I said before, it's something which nobody can ever take away from you. And uh, I'm very privileged at the minute to to still be involved with the football club and. You know, it's very exciting. This year is really exciting to you know to, to see where we go because I think this year I personally do think we've got a great great chance. Yeah, I mean, uh, I watched the um, great piece of work by Daniel Chapman the other day. Um, so he went to win, uh, and Mel Sterling brought that up in the documentary actually about the family club. Mm. Did everything together. Mm. You know, he says if we went out, the wives came with us. Yep. You know, did everything. And for a long time in recent years, that seemed that seemed to be shifted onto the back burner, possibly by the people who are in charge at the club. Uh, but from the outside looking in, so we're not behind the scenes. That feel appears to have come back together. You know, we've seen the we've seen the club get behind certain charities and. Well, and I think um, I think the chairman's got a, a huge credit for that. Um, you know, we we saw last year what the chairman was doing behind the scenes, um, and he was doing a lot with the foundation side of things, bringing the the ladies team back in, uh, but also the just the little things which needed to be done behind the scenes, which yeah. none of you fans will see. The changing rooms need to be upgraded. The, the Legends Club came in, bringing the old players in, the, the decoration around the place, you know, just, just sprucing things up and making it look like a premiership club. Um, but also the, the charity work which he was involved with and, and slowly getting involved with little things as well. And I think he's picked the right areas to go to as the chairman. I think yeah. I think now, obviously, you've got Bayelsa who's come in who has brought the players massively together. You know, these players, we've got to remember, last year, there's 10 of these players were all playing last year and yeah. they were all crap. 
at times. You know, let's be honest, they were terrible at times. Yeah. yeah. You know, but that now you look at them, Bielsa's brought a solidarity and, and we are a togetherness, which is what Howard Wilkinson brought in, you know, down in, in them days when they won the league. You know, that that togetherness was, was huge and that team spirit was huge. And I think I do think also a little bit now of you know, we've got rid of a lot of the Italian influence which, you know, Cellino brought in. Um and I think there was resentment from a little bit of that as well, I think, from the players, the English players. I think now my understanding is everybody speaks English up there. That's the first language. That's what everybody has to speak. Um, but he also speaks English to them um, as well. You know, a bit broken at times. And he's got his his guy there, but he's he's speaking to them constantly. I love the story about him picking up the litter. Yeah, I, must I, admit, I must absolutely love that. Love that. Um, you know, you see the players going down to the hospital and, and doing the bits down there. I just think there's a real good feeling around the football club and I think the chairman, I think Bales has got a massive credit to uh, to bringing that to the football club and bringing us back to the forefront again. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Uh, unprofessional, my phone's buzzing outside. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, even like things away from the official sort of, you know, things you're seeing, um, we saw Barry Douglas go out and put a um, rose on a fan who'd unfortunately mm. lost his life out on the... Um, we've seen Calvin Phillips appear at people's houses and giving them shirts and uh, I saw a bit last week about a fallen soldier in Afghanistan and they got his family up to Thorpe Arch and they're presenting him with a poppy shirt you know these, these are things that five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago were far removed and uh, I know certainly I didn't like these guys but I felt a real like sort of gap between the fan base and the club and then that's when the resentment started coming because you're paying an absolute fortune to go watch your club and we felt so sort of far detached and uh, we've said it from day one um, I think Rogers, Mr. Rajazani and, and Angus Kinnear and the rest of the senior management team at Leeds need massive sort of praise just for that aspect and then to go out of the way and bring you know a world renowned coach in who I'll be honest excites me every time he does a press conference never mind feel the team yeah. um, I think you know you've got to sort of take the hat off to, to I, I think with the you know you, you, you look at the Bremner statue and things of what they've done there That's some, it's something quite simple what they've done around where people can buy the, the blocks and things and I think that I think that in itself has brought a lot of um, a lot of that I think social media helps as well because you can get in, involved with the players a little bit more now than what yeah. maybe you used to be able to and you can see what the kind of players are like and, and things I, you know, I like that I saw a picture the other day there was Cooper there was Douglas and there was um, I can't remember the, the third one there was three of them they were out in Dubai with all yeah, the families yeah Adam Forshaw, Forshaw yeah. yeah that's right and there was there was the three of them out there with all the families the wives and stuff and that shows that there's a togetherness within yeah. the team You know, mm. I think that's the thing which again I go back to to, to our day with you know when they won the league um, every Wednesday night the boys were out and it wasn't just three or four of them it was every single one of them yeah. you know Strack had them out every single night and I think that's the thing which brings that solidarity and that kind of you know togetherness a little bit in our day now it's a little bit different it's the changing rooms it's the it's everything which goes on up at the training ground needs to be right and I think Bales has brought that in and I think the, the togetherness now is, is huge and I think uh, I think we can see that on the pitch. You know that Wigan game when you know Windass was was going for, and there were seven of them sh chasing back. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year, Janssen's come out and said it. I think last year there'd been one of them chasing back. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's that comes from your manager. That comes from paying the manager the he, the money which he deserves, and and things. You know, and he brought a solidarity within that football club, totally, and a respect back because of who he is to every other football club not just every everybody in the championship but every single football club in the football league and the champ in and in the uh, in the premier league and i think that's that's a massive statement from leeds and you know as i say you know you've got to you've got to look at the backroom staff of who who they've brought in and it's right what they've done and yeah, i yeah. think that um you know i think you've got to look at you know victor as well um for pursuing it and and obviously saying i think we should be looking at this guy i think we should be trying our hardest to get him yeah and he went out and, and did, you know, and the players which he brought in last year, to a certain point, Klitsch in particular, you look at that and you think, they're actually, these are pretty good players, you know, do we, yeah. do we, last year we wanted to give Vic to the, the boot, you know, now we look at him and you think, well, actually, he's doing a good job within what he's brought in. The, a lot of these foreigners who we know have been good enough, they're actually coming out and working out, yeah, they've had a year now in the championship, they know what it's like. And they're coming out and playing uh, playing football like we're seeing it, and, you know, on home and away, which is great. Yeah, I must admit, I saw the picture from the guys in Dubai, Cooper, uh, Douglas, 
Uh, I did actually fear for four shows life being a former <laughs> gingerman myself. <laughs> thought you're not going to cope very well under the sun. <clears throat> Might burst into flames. But um, yeah, I, I have to agree with that. And I think the solidarity brings us back to um, your Youth Cup final winning side. Because I'll be honest, uh, 93, um, not wanting to make anybody feel old. I was, I was <laughs> fairly young. Yeah, so uh, sort of my experience of it is Jamie Forrester's overhead kick. He's going to say it. Ben weren't born. Ben weren't born. I weren't born. Yeah. <laughs> You're not born, Ben? I weren't born, mate. Oh. Now that really makes me feel <laughs> sorry, like I'm sorry, doing it. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, right, Ben, you've got to leave now. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, 93, I was, I was quite on the young side and sort of my memories of the 93 winning, uh, winning, Youth Cup winning side was, you know, the trophies and the photos and, and, and Jamie Forrester's overhead kick, if I'm, if I'm genuinely honest. But, I mean, what would it like playing with them, sort of them lads in that team at the time? I mean, just to chuck... A couple of names out there. No Whelan's probably, you know, um, at current Leeds United level, the, the most well known in terms of he's still involved with radio commentary yep. and such like. But um, other players, uh, Mark Ford, um, Mark Tinkler, uh, Matthew Smithard, Paul Pettinger, uh, and uh, where's the one as well? Um, Kev Sharp. Yep. Yeah, still well, speak to them all. I, the Kev Sharp one that was very interesting for me that I didn't actually know what Kev didn't start his career in England. No, him and Jamie Forrest were both in uh, Ogs Air. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so their first day actually was the same day as, as mine. They, they were in the England set up and they, they signed for Ogs Air at, I think it was 14. I think they actually did. I think they walked out, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, I don't think things were going. It was a bit like Lily, they went from Lily Shaw straight to there. Um, Mark Tink was obviously, Tink was the captain, I think, of England as well at, um, at under 16 level, I think. So he was a big cue for us to come in. And um, I think the biggest, the biggest thing for me, which with that group of lads is as I say we still speak to everybody we, nobody knows where Ford is anyhow you know, he was a he's a Man United fan anyhow we don't, we'll pull, throw that one out <laughs> we, we, you know we don't need to uh, say much more about that but um, no we, we had a we had a great set of lads um, and I think for me being a first year it was the second years which I had when I was when I came into the first year we got a lot of experience in that first year um, we had Dick Bate there who was who was our manager very well experienced manager um, at that level knew a lot about football working with the FA and, and, and things like that um, you know so he he gave us a good grounding um, also the second years they were hard they were you know they were hard with the second years and not one of them I think there was in fact there was one of them who got taken on as a professional um, out of that and we we all looked at each other I think when that day was because you literally sit in a changing room and you get called in and um, we looked at that day I think a few of us kind of thought that ain't happening to us um, you know, I'd already made my debut in the in the reserves. I was playing regular in the reserves. Um, come the second year, as was all the guys you've mentioned there. Um, you know, I, I was actually with Jamie Forrester last Thursday, uh, Thursday or Friday. I was with Jamie um, and things. So they're all still doing well. Thinks he's up in Middlesbrough with the uh, I think he's yeah, under 18s yeah. coach. Um, and things so yeah the, the, the boys are good speaks to Sharpie quite regularly as well see him down at games obviously he looks after Phillips yeah, he's, yeah. he's one of his players um, but uh, yeah the great set of lads and, and, and to be fair you know the camaraderie which we had we all grew up together you know we, we, had, we used to have court cases um, you know, <laughs> as well which you might have heard about the court cases which we had which we, to be fair Paul Pettinger we call him Pit Lad you know so um, Barnsley lad you know he loves it um, he was actually one of the games uh, I can't remember which game it was a couple of games ago and he was here and stuff so the boys still come down but yeah we, had, we used to have kick, you know, court cases for people if, if you weren't doing your jobs or you know the discipline had gone or you know you'd said something out in town or something like that and it got back then you know we would we'd put you into your place um, you know which was which obviously you can't do now yeah. Um but that kind of got you discipline with on with on the football pitch, and you know the, the second year we 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 had a, a really good first year um, squad of people come in as well to to kind of help us. You know we we very nearly didn't get through the first round. I think it was first or second round against Sheffield United. We we went into an extra time or um, I think it was a, maybe even a re replay, and we ended up winning that one. Um, but they were always quite close to us as well in in the league, and you know we got we just kept on going and we kept on going. We got to Norwich and. We won down at Norwich and then we came back up here and we were like not far away and then, you know, obviously um, the, the class of 92 as they're called, you know, the, the Beckhams, the Skulls, the Nevilles, the, you know, they all roll off your tongue, you know, end up playing them in the final and, the, you know, my biggest thing about the final was um, was coming down on the bus. Um, we'd come from Morley, we'd, we're a guy called Dave Connor's house, was five five or six of us there, his mum had made us some, some pre-match and 
and things. We got our heads down, a little bit of a rest and things, and uh, we came down on the bus and we're like, the hell, it's busy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we just didn't expect it. There was thirty, I think there was thirty thousand at Old Trafford, yeah, um, and we played really well at Old Trafford. And we got a great result there, and um, we came back. And you know, yeah, there was we had thirty three and a half thousand people there. I think we had, and you know, we uh, I would say over the two legs, we they didn't ex- they didn't know what to expect, and you know, we uh, we beat them up really, to be to be fair, um, and the atmosphere down here will never. That will never leave you, you know that that game. It's one thing which everybody asks you about. Oh, were you involved in the, the class of night? You know the, the youth cup against Man United and stuff. And it, you know, they, they, it was the first time the the big stand had been opened. They had to open that for everybody. It was a 15 minute delay because they couldn't get everybody in. Um, and go back to that solidarity side of it. Every single first teamer was there as well, and we uh, we all went out after um, in our kits and all the first team has looked after us and we were like kings we could go anywhere we wanted we could drink what we wanted it was it was great um but i think that's the thing i think the youth cup itself was your was your stepping stone and then everybody thought that we would go on to maybe do a little bit more i don't think howard was willing to put us in as much as what alex ferguson was um, yeah it's, it's funny you said that um kev sharp told the yorkshire evening post in an interview in 2011 that he didn't believe wilkinson uh, believed in blood in youngsters he seemed more bothered about experience and uh, star striker Jamie Forrester talked about being pushed down the pecking order after Wilkinson bought some players in the summer of '93. Yeah, I think Jamie. I think I, I've got to say, I think all of us were a bit hot-headed. Yeah. I think we were all wanting to play. We all thought we should be playing. Um, you know, the one who made the biggest impact was Noel. Yeah. You know, Snowy came on and, and made a big impact straight away. Um, we call him Snowy because he settled in so quick. You know, David Batty <laughs> gave him it. Gary Speed gave him that. They were, them two gave him the, you know, the, his, his nickname, and he's, he's known as Snowy wherever he goes. Because he's mental, he's a great lad. But he's mental. <laughs> um, he really is. But he's, you know, he made the biggest impact out of all of us. He, you know, he was a bigger lad. You know, he was mobile. Um, you know, and I think Leeds, to be fair, I think Leeds sold him a little bit early. Um, you know, to Coventry. But um, you know, he had issues, as we know, down at Coventry. You know, Strack took him in. You know, he had to live with Strack for a bit. Um, you know, and things. As I say, he's mental, but you know, he was a great player, and he he, he had a good career. Um, you know, Jamie was a great technical player, but maybe Jamie just wasn't big enough to to be in the in the Premiership. Um, you know, Tinks maybe maybe wasn't quite quick enough to be in the Premiership. You know, Sharpie might not have had a right foot. I might not have had the vision of that. Might not have been fit enough. You know, so it could be a number of little things which these managers pick up on and. You know, we just didn't get that chance to play. I can remember we played against Everton at home, and we lost. I think we, I think we lost two one, and that was the most of the youth cup team he played. There was me, there was Tinks, Sharpie played, and I think Jamie played. There was four or five of us who played in that game, um, and we give we give a good account of ourselves. I gave a penalty away that day. I'm sorry, <laughs> <It> um, <laughs> but I think that was maybe that was the time when he was trying to blood us, yeah. and we we lost, and he he maybe bottled it to to put us back on again maybe I don't know it's something which Howard would have to you know say but then you know you, you see Paddy who came in and he flooded all the youngsters and it worked um, yeah. you know you go with a bit of experience and, and a bit of the youth it, it does it does and can work and it showed showed at Man United with the 93 92, 93 lot um, and it showed with, with the Leeds lot when they came through and because they won the youth cup as well with Robbo and uh, Harry Kuhl and um, you know, Harty and all that group, they came through, but they came through, but then you had a manager then who wanted to blood them yeah. and gave them that authority just to go go and express yourself. Yeah. And I think Howard wasn't that kind of person of go and express yourself. He was more of a person of it's four four two, it's this is what we play yeah. like, you know, we give it to the best players and work from there. Um, you know, so yeah, it's you look back on a little bit of regret, but on the same side of it is it's football, isn't it? It's all about opinions. That's why we're here. You know, yeah, every, everybody's got an opinion on a player. Everybody thinks somebody's better than other. You know, and I think that um, I think in our day it was it was definitely that. And I think you know Fergie definitely gave them. You saw Fergie put them in and bring them out again. And I, I listened to Phil Neville say it, and he said that um, he dropped me for a game, but he'll say I need you for the QPR game. Oh, right, okay, brilliant. And he looked down the list of when the QPR game was. It's like three months away. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever happens he played in that QPR game now he might have played before that but it's that kind of thing of yeah. keeping you on your toes but also putting you in and I also think a little bit now with this under 23s and the, the old st- st- style which we had which, which was the you know the 
the Pontins League as it was called where we played against reserve teams but then reserve teams were kind of first teams as well so you could see if the youngsters were good enough to play against some of the players who were injured and they were coming back you know and and, and potentially blood them a bit quicker into the first team because I think at 23 year old really you should know as a as a club if they're going to be good enough to play in the first team or not yeah we start <laughs> talking about it now don't we as in players who get stuck in that real limbo where too old for too old for under 23s not quite cutting it at a first team level and that's the point when you know unfortunately no matter how much promise they may have held previously it's probably time to move them on and let them go find their level kind of thing cause, I, know, think they're, I think they're scared of losing somebody mm. I think you know for us at 16 16, 17, 18 it's you're kind of scared of losing somebody at 18 but in a way they kind of go well they'll go off to some, some another club but I think 23 they're still thinking they might grow a little bit more they might they might actually be we can get them fitter you know we talk about body fats and things like that with players and you might be able to get somebody a lot quicker, a lot fitter, technically a little bit better, you know, from that. Now it seems to be that these under 23s are on, some of them, very, very good money as well. Particularly, you know, you look at Chelsea as an example, how many are there under 23s and are out on loan in different places and on fortunes. You know, you look at Blackman on here, we're talking potentially 27 grand a week, you know, he's on at Chelsea. Well, that, that became a stumbling block at Sheffield United, didn't it? Sheffield United wanted to take him permanently but couldn't afford his wages. Exactly. And if he's got a four or five year contract still with that on it, why would he want to move? Well, exactly. Yeah, you know, he's on 100 thing, grand a month, it's it, it's mental. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's another problem. That's, that's another problem within football, I think, without you know, I think it may be a little bit of a problem now coming through, but I think it's a, I think it is a bit of a problem within football. You know, going through the, the eras, um, I think you've got a lot of these kids coming through now who, you know, maybe from seven year old, um, they've been at a club all the way through, and they think there's nothing else, and there's nothing else to go on. Maybe they need to concentrate on the on this ac academic stuff and make sure that I think the clubs definitely make sure of that now. You've got to get yeah. certain grades and things. Um, you know, but like for us, it was straight in, and we did a, you know, an MVQ sports thing. Which when I came out of football, it meant absolutely nothing. So <laughs> it's like, well, what's the point yeah. in doing it? You yeah, might as well yeah. go get a, a, you know, a, be a joiner or you know, an electrician or get something which you'd actually come in and do and and things as as a background. I know Matt Jones went and did it when he was playing. He was he was still at, he did like his uni course while he was still playing the football and stuff. So yeah, it's um yeah, it's difficult I think to get that crossover and it's very difficult for them kids to come out at 23 yeah. and find a club especially if you look at Blackman 27 grand a week well where's he going to go for 12 grand a week he's yeah. still got to be looking at championship level at that price you know you, you first division you're looking at maybe 4 or 5 grand a week well mm -hmm. Is he going to take that much of a pay cut? And the thing is, as well, it puts him in that funny position where he's on twenty-seven grand a week, gets used to the twenty-seven grand a week, doesn't play for the Chelsea teams, can't break in. Nobody can sign him mm. because he's on twenty-seven grand mm. a week. He sits out his five year, and then it comes into his five years. Nobody's just interested per se because they've not seen much from him, mm. and he hadn't been willing to yep. leave for obvious reasons on a lot of money. And you, you know, you see some of these players just just vanish from the game, never mm. to be seen again. You know? we, we said it about Baker, didn't we, at the beginning of the yeah, season? Yeah. He seems to be in a. A, a very similar thing, and he didn't get many game, m much game time at Middlesbrough last last season. Um, and then he's come here, and he hasn't really Same featured again, at all yeah. for the for the first team there. And he's in a, he's in a similar sort of position where he's 23, 24, and everyone's saying, well, he needs to take that next step. But even here, he's, he's not even getting a chance. And you can see why, because the players ahead of him are are bringing you know bringing it week in week out. Yeah. But he must he must kind of be looking at it, the situation at the minute and think. You know what am I going? Where do I go from it here? It's a brave player, doesn't it, to cut that to cut that away. I mean, we've seen uh, Chalaba. He's he's cut away from Chelsea, and he gone. I know he's gone to Watford, like which he'll probably be on similar wages. But he stepped away from that essentially Chelsea security blanket where he could to earn big wages for five years potentially, mm. but never really see his his potential because he gets stifled with the money he's on and the team he's with. Yeah, and and Sancho did it. Yeah, Matt, Jordan, you know, Sancho, he's just yeah. gone gone into the England team. You know, he's he's gone from Man City, you know, over to uh, to Dortmund. You know, it, is it a risk to go abroad? Mm. I don't think it is. Um, if you're confident in your own ability, um, which all these players are, they're all very confident in, in their own ability nowadays. Um, is it a risk? Well, no, it shouldn't be. Um, they've got to go and prove themselves, and the only way you can improve yourself is is, is playing the first team. I actually, I actually like Baker. I think he's a decent player. Yeah, I have um, to agree. Yeah. You know, I think he influenced games when he's come on. I think he gives us something different. You know, to what Saez would give you in that in that position. Um, you know, I think he, him and Saez, uh, him and um, Hernandez play very well together. You know, so I think he's got something, um, and I do think he's got something in in a in a longer term. I think he could 
maybe a mid-championship team, he would get in week in, week out. Mm. At this present moment in time, we've got players who are playing very well you know, at Leeds, which is making it very difficult for him to get into, which is pretty much what Chelsea wanted him to do, I think. And that's what they all need to do. They all need to, to have somebody fighting for that position. And, yeah. you know, if you're fighting for that position, then... You know, you've got to play week. You've got to play well week in, week out. We've seen that with Sayers. You know, he's definitely gone off in the last three or four weeks. You know, and Bayelsa has brought him out. You know, and by bringing him out, it, it's showing that character of what Sayers is going to be like. What's he like in training? What's his reaction? Yeah. You know, that's what the manager wants to see. Now, if his reaction last year's reactions, I thought you know Sayers in particular was was terrible. You know, at times when he got brought off, you know, showing petulance and things like that. Well, he's changing the team because you're not doing anything. You know, now you don't see as much of that. You know, and I think when Baker comes in, it does give you something totally different to what he what he's got. He's got two great feet, yeah. left or right, good free tick free kick taker. That's his speciality by all accounts. We haven't seen much of that because we haven't really had that many around, right. and we've also got Douglas who can do that as well. Yeah, I think he had one one attempt at Brentford. He'd just come on Brentford at home, and he it was his first touch. Very very yeah. close. Yeah, yeah. Was, so it's sad night, really. yeah. and I think it is. I think it's a brave decision for him to come out on loan. I think you know it's it's their development, and I yeah. think. You know, we used to do it a lot younger, so we used to go out and in my area it was you'd go out on loan at eighteen, nineteen. Well now they'll go out on loan at twenty three, twenty four. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. the, the the clubs still see something in them and they see something which potential, you know, and they don't want to lose them. And yeah. you know, it's it's difficult then when your contract comes up of as you say, where where do you balance it? Where do you fit mm -hmm. in, in that? Yeah. You know, you cost twenty seven grand a twelve grand. Well twenty seven grand's a premiership player. It's not a championship player, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. realistically. You know, and a championship player, especially like a goalkeeper, you I would say no goalkeeper is going to get paid 27 grand a week in, um, you know, unless you're top notch and you come let's potentially come down from the Premiership and you're in the Championship and things. But you know, and you've got the payments. But um, I can't see anybody on that kind of money. No, no at I all. Agree. I mean, uh, I'm led to believe as well with Baker, he took some form of a pay cut in terms of his deal in coming to Leeds. I'm not sure how that's structured, how that works, uh, but let me be, believe he did take a personal hit to, to come to Leeds. Yeah, I, I, well, I think there's a lot of players who need to do that mm. to to push their, their careers forward a little bit but I also think you know with that side of it a lot of people get a bit hit up on that he's on let's say we'll just put 20 grand in there you know most likely Chelsea paying 10 and we're paying 10 yeah yeah so it kind of works for players it works for the, the sister club as such and it works for us so it's it's kind of trying to balance that out a little bit you know generally we won't be paying all the loan ease no. full um, you know uh, wages they, they'll be subsidised from the other clubs as well and I think that's what's happened obviously that's what's happened with Blackman same happened at, at Sheffield United with him um, you know but uh, yeah it's your personal development and it's Process, also yeah. going back to that same thing again it's how much confidence you've got in yourself and you've got to push yourself sometimes yeah definitely and that kind of brings us on really to uh, Jamal Blackman obviously we've seen this week after a pretty late challenge in the 23s against Birmingham that he's unfortunately broken his fibula and has returned back to Chelsea. It looks like he needed um, some form of surgery as well to, to obviously correct his injury. So that's, so that's a bad one. It's a bad one, yeah. And uh, funnily enough, we were just lauding him last week. So the curse of talking shut is alive mm. and well. Every player we've either criticised or lauded has instantly become injured after. <laughs> yeah. So, therefore, Daniel Ayala, uh, are you getting on this season? <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going on. Uh, no, but um, joking apart, it does leave us. Um, obviously, it leaves Jamal Blackman in a bad predicament. You would imagine it'll be... Eight, nine, maybe even twelve months before he's, he's back playing again, which is you know a sad one for him. Uh, never really got his chance at Leeds. In fairness, probably a, again a victim of circumstance. Came in three weeks into pre-season. Bielsa didn't quite see him as being um, of the physical stature he wanted him. By this point, Bailey Peacock Farrell had kind of stamped down his his authority on the number one shirt, and we we were limited to seeing Blackman in some fleeting League One, uh, League Cup games. Um, so that's kind of that, and it leaves us with. Essentially, mm. Bailey Peacock Farrell as a as any form as of experience that, yeah. in <laughs> in first team football. I know the young lad uh, Myzik had a couple of first team games in Poland, but Poland to the Championship, with all due respect to Poland, uh, is not quite the same. So, where do we go from here in the goalkeeping situation, Raggy? Well, our hands are tied in terms of we have to get someone. It's January now, unless. Yeah, unless there's a, le something goes amiss to Peacock Farrell, then we can ask for yeah, yeah. Yeah. The emergency. Yeah, exactly, which is like an emergency yeah. loan, yeah. which again, who's going to be available for that? Obviously, we've been linked this week with Tom Eaton um, at Burnley, not getting any uh, any game time there. Personally, I think that'll be a, a good move for the club. I agree, but I personally think it's a bit of a lazy link. And I think yeah, it could be. Yeah, we don't know it. I think it's probably one that's been born out of somebody saying, 
Oh, he'd be a good signing. Mm-hmm. He's kind of gra- uh, gathered legs because going back to point that Andy made, what type of money are we talking on Tommy, an England goalkeeper at Burnley being on? But then again, you look at him, he's he's most likely third choice at the minute yeah, yeah, at definitely. Burnley. So he's not playing, so he needs to play games. Yeah, um, he'll be a great signing. Great signing. Um, I think Peacock Farrell, I've got to say, you know, I said it before the show, before we came on, um, I actually think he's done well this year. I, he's, he's, he's got a few mistakes in him and he's, we've seen a few of them. Um, but his shot stopping this year has been top notch. His distribution is the best in the league. Um, but he also wants somebody who can play at the back. Um, he wants somebody who can ping it out a little bit and start everything from there. And Blackman couldn't do that. You know, when we when we saw him in the in the uh, cup games and stuff, he looked nervous when it was at his feet. Um, which then makes everybody else nervous, makes the crowd nervous, makes you know the, the centre backs nervous. And I just think that Peacock Farrell is is so calm and collective. You know, with uh, with a ball at his feet, he's very much like you know the England keeper is at the minute. You yeah. know, he's um, he's fantastic with his feet, and that's the way the modern goalkeeper has to go. And I think um, you know, obviously bringing him out of the international. You've got to remember, he's an international now as well. He's pick up Farrell. He's number one choice for Northern Ireland. He's he's worked his way in there. There's there's no um, there's no getting away from it. He's he's done very well this year. You know, I know a lot of people think he's making a lot of mistakes, but let's let's look at that West Brom mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake, but Klitsch should have got rid of it beforehand. You know, so let's let, you, as a goalkeeper, you make one mistake. And you're really cool for it, and you're on top of you, and it's it's your fault, and it's this, that, and the other, because obviously everybody sees it. Um, as an outfield player, you've got a, you've got another ten people who can help you out, and it doesn't really you know come across. So I think that an international goalkeeper would be fantastic to come in and push Peacock Farrell, um, and him in particular would be would be fantastic. Went to the World Cup, you know, but then got injured when he, yeah. you know, after that, and um, you know obviously Joe Hart's come in, they've they've got Pope there as well, you know. So if he's third on the on the pecking list. He, he might want to get out and play some games and, and say look I want to get out and he sees what's happening at Leeds United at the minute and he wants to be involved with it you know which is a really good position for Leeds United to be in to be able to say these players potentially could be interested in coming to Leeds because we potentially could be onto something very very big this year yeah, you know definitely. and that brings a different calibre of player wanting to come to the football club Does it not add a, a, a difficult spin on things though with the fact that Peacock Farrell is now an international goalkeeper is now an established number one if you come to Tom, Tom Eaton and say, come to Leeds and shift this young lad here, would that be a negative for him? Would he want to be coming in and saying, I, I want to be coming in, I want to be playing week in, week out? Would he be willing to come and give that sort of battle? Or are we going to see a similar player to sort of Jamal Blackman again, a youngster who, you know, they end up like sort of egg, edging it out? I mean, for me personally, I'd like to see another experienced goalkeeper come in. Mm-hmm. Not just for what happens on a Saturday, but that experienced head around Peacock Farrell, maybe just guide him in certain areas and things like that. because. If you look at the goalkeeping situation for Leeds as well, even as goalkeeping coach is extremely young and he's got no playing experience, uh, you know, he probably has played but not at any similar sort of level to what he's coaching at. That's not taking anything away from his coaching attributes, I've no doubt he's an absolutely world class coach, otherwise he wouldn't be doing the job he's doing, but uh, there's a lot to be said in there for that arm round here or that bit of a nudge here and there from an experienced keeper, but can we get the experienced keeper I in? Think, I think going to the coaching side, you've got Sully up there who's doing that. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. So, you know, on that side of it, I know Neil Sullivan, you know, comes down a lot to the games, and we see him a lot in the Legends Club again. And you know, you, you ask him about things, and he will—he's always talking to Peacock Farrell, always. So you know, the experience of, of somebody coming in and giving that is great, uh, and that's already there. But I, I just think going back to the same point, really, is that a good, experienced goalkeeper coming in and pushing Peacock Farrell, yeah. so he makes a couple of mistakes. He's going to come in and, and, and take his place, and if you can get an international goalkeeper, the manager might go, "Yeah, look, you come in here, you sign for us, you're in." You know, he might say that we don't we don't know what's really no, said no, behind the scene. Not. I think the biggest mistake we made was last year when we got rid of Green. You know, because he would have been yeah. still coming through the ranks, still being there, good, experienced goalkeeper would have maybe brought Peacock Far out a little bit last year when the the heat was hitting a little bit last year at some point. Brought Green back in again, you know, and it's. I think that would have really helped Peacock Farrell to come on a little bit more with having that experience. I think with two young goalkeepers, I think it's a little bit difficult to bring the experience, what you what you gain from playing yeah. a number of games and and being involved with high pressured games as well, to kind of dictate that. We heard about the rumor about you know not the rumor. It's what Ray Rooney said it to you know to the lad on on Saturday, but it's like Thursday, Friday, whenever the game was for, for England and. You know, he's gone up to him and gone. He could see that he was he was nervous, so he just went over, sat next to him, and he was like, "Oh, I feel fine now." 
So that's just the experience which an experienced player would be able to give you. That's yeah, yeah. that's what in and around the change room, you know, they have the goalkeepers union and that's the, the strange characters of goalkeepers anyhow. <laughs> They're all mad as at us. Um, they really are, but you know, they, they stick together and you know, having an experienced keeper there giving you that little bit of advice is is it would be huge for Peacock Frau because I think it would bring him on even more. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> Philip Millian has brought a point up, and uh, to be honest, it's a bit of a left field one, but it's one that, given his previous Championship experience, uh, you could see. Uh, Danny Ward, um, Liverpool, ex Liverpool goalkeeper who spent a lot of time on loan at Huddersfield Town, not getting a game at Leicester. Uh, could he be an option? But again, kind of. Yes, he's got a bit more experience, but it's, it's a bit Jamal Blackman esque again in it, where mm. Blackman had a good season at Sheffield United, you know. I personally would like to see a more experienced keeper. Come I'd, I'd like to see somebody who's got a lot of games behind them. Yeah, mm. than, than somebody yeah. who's who's not got a lot of games who, but have got a lot of experience within a club and stuff, but not actual championship games, Premiership games. You know, you're not looking any any lower than that. So that's what it's got to be yeah. for me. It's got to be experience. It's got to have a few games behind them. Chucking yeah. a name out there, Summer was heavily linked with David Stockdale, Leeds United fan. Uh, definitely not getting a look in at Birmingham anytime <coughs> soon. He's at South End. He went to South End on a short-term emergency loan, similar to the situation we could have found ourselves in. So I'm not sure if he is actually still there. But again, could Leeds be looking at sort of reigniting that one due to the Gary Monk link? I very much doubt it. Um, well, I know a little bit about that. Um, I was at the boxing with with David, and uh, when Josh was down here, yeah, and um, we had good chats then, and we were talking. He's, you know, Ian Hart as well with him, and. You know that was it. It was on the cards um, to come to Leeds, but the, I think the biggest problem he's got is the same as what we were talking about. Blackman, he's got a four-year contract at at, uh, at Birmingham. He's going to be on a lot of money because um, he came from Brighton, so a lot of money to come into to the football club. Monks kind of said to him straight away, "You're not you're not involved." So he's gone right. Okay, we'll pay me up. I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. So it's a money thing. You know, why would you let a four-year contract on? I don't know. It might be on. 30 to 50 grand a week you just don't know um, I would imagine it'd be in that scenario because of where he came from um, you know it might be with all these bonuses and everything else why would you walk away from that yeah it's true isn't it yeah. <clears throat> you yeah. know why would you when the, when the club have treated you so bad why would you kind of go do you know what I'm gonna I'm just gonna sit on, sit on my money you you give you pay me the money I'll leave or do a deal where because I think they wanted a million quid for him as well all right so if they're wanting money for him as well and and his contract paying up and the contract yeah. and they don't want to pay his contract up but they want to do that well Leeds are not going to pay him that money so you kind of it's that negotiation yeah, side yeah. again we're going back to that same thing but he's also getting on a little bit um, but definitely 100% if Leeds United came in for him he would bite their hand off if, uh, if Birmingham would do the deal 100% so I think um, all in all that's uh, something that's going to we'll have to see how that plays out in January but it's definitely now Suddenly, a priority for a goalkeeper to come in uh, mm, purely, humongous, to, you know, <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, well, yeah, just is, isn't it? Um, slightly uh, happier thoughts. So we saw uh, Izzy Brown make a, a, a appearance and in a, a white back, shirt. Yeah. Um, didn't watch it? No. Uh, no, I was working. I actually well. caught a bit of it because um, I wasn't working. I was trying to work out whether you were or not. No, <laughs> sure, I'm sure it was sure my dinner hour. It was my dinner hour. Uh, but. No, he, he looked bright in parts. To be honest, he looked like he wanted to get involved. I can't profess that I know a massive amount again, uh, you know, about um, Izzy Brown. I can only kind of go off, you know, opposition fans who claim that you know he's, he did well for us. He did, you know, he did this, he did that, he did the other. But if we, you know, he's still a long way off. I would imagine any first team involvement at the moment. He's only banked forty-five minutes and had a pretty serious knee injury before that. Uh, but again, it, it, it's starting to look a little more promising. When, if we're honest. We've had a bit of an injury crisis. In, in my eyes, it's it's a crisis. We've got definitely. a small Massive squad as well. So, yeah. Yeah. A small squad and a lot of injuries. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, Jamal Blackman being another one who we've just you know seen now disappear. Obviously not our player, but you know still a an injury. Berardi with a very pretty serious injury. He's going to be out for quite a while. Luke Kaling, mm -hmm. you know the, the list goes on. And I, I think I said it in our group text. You've got to give a little bit of credit as well that we're still in there. Don't we? You know we're still in there with a team that at times has been fit together with a bit of plaster to be fair we've been playing wingers at left back mm. wingers at right back you know Calvin Phillips who's done an absolutely amazing job you know as, as that sort of holding screening stroke centre back seeing him fitting at centre back you know and it's, it's got to be credit to, to Bielsa that he's, he has so much trust in his players that he can you know move them around and, and see fits for them to play where he sees the you know the sort of gaps but January um, when I talked briefly about it off air but it seems to be 
gathering a little bit of pace within the Leeds United fan base in terms of strengthening. I know somebody's just commented on Facebook earlier on. Uh, David, uh, Danny Williams, Tom Eaton or Stockdale, we just mentioned both of them. Uh, Mose Keane on loan from Juventus. Apparently we had a look at him last uh, summer, but they didn't want to do a deal with him on loan. Uh, could be good additions for the promotion push. I know we briefly talked about it before you came on air, Andy, but if you was Marcello Bielsa, uh, would you want to strengthen this side currently? I think the position where we are, yeah, but I'd want somebody who's ready to go. Mm. And if they're not ready to go, then leave it. You know, you've got Issy Brown coming back in, who, you know, I thought he was fantastic when he was at Huddersfield. Um, got a really good reputation for himself, you know, in this league from from that experience. He is a new signing. We've we've taken not a gamble on him. You know, Chelsea, I believe, are still paying his wages, but then he's up here at the minute until he's actually fully fit to play in the first team. So, yeah. if that's the case. It's a no-brainer. He's like a new signing for us. Um, I know Bielsa's come out and said Ailing's like a new signing because he's going to be back at New Year. Berardi's going to be a new signing because he's going to be back at New Year. Bamford's yeah, going to Bamford. be like a new signing, you know, because he's going to be back. So you kind of look at it in that way, you know. For me, at this present moment, well, you're absolutely right. We are in a bit. Of, we've we've had a little bit of a you know crisis, particular up front. Um, you know, we haven't really had an out-and-out -out centre forward. You know, Roof is he an out-and-out -out centre forward? You know, are we scoring as many goals as we should be? Realistically, no. We're making a lot of chances, and we we need somebody just to you know come off the backside and and the the scrappy little goals, the Gary Lineker goals, we we call them. It's like you know what he was like in his day was he was a six-yard man. You know, everything in within the six-yard, that's him done. Yeah, he's alive, he's yeah. sorted. Um, and I just think that's the thing. I think that's what we need. And you know, I don't think this guy will go out and buy somebody or bring somebody in just for the sake of it. It's got to be the right person. Um, he'll have his eyes on some people already. Um, who that will be is a different matter. You know, he could surprise us. I pref I would personally prefer somebody who knows the championship. You know, the kid from Juventus. There. You know, realistically, for me, I wouldn't go that way. Mm. I would be going a bit more. Basically, Premiership who are not playing, yeah. mm. you know, get them out. But a little bit again. I go back to my, you know a bit of my day. You know, Strack, prime example. Gordon Strack and came in and changed this club all around. You know, he changed what we were, what what we believed. Vinnie Jones came in for eighteen months and did the same thing. You know, Vinnie Jones is an absolute legend. He was out of the year. You know, realistically, he played for a certain amount of time and then moved on. You know, so we need somebody with that experience just to come in and help a little bit. And as I say, you know, a striker. Is I think a prime side. I think you know. I think you're right now. I think we need a keeper in there, um, and I think that's the only thing. But we haven't seen Bamford yet. You know, Bamford's not yeah. really come in, and you know, I know he's had the bad injury and stuff. But you know, him coming in and pushing Roof helped Roof, and also potentially then Bamford coming back in, and if he gets a couple of goals early doors, Izzy Brown coming in, you know, taking that that role in the midfield. Who's he is a goal scorer? Because that's the other thing. This is the thing with Sayers. We go back to Sayers in that sense. You know, Sayers doesn't score for me enough goals in his position, which he should be. He's a number ten, A number ten should be getting you between ten and fifteen goals a year. That's yeah. that's his job. His job is behind the front guy, which is Roof, and in front of the midfield. And you know, but he he doesn't score the goals which we need. We need somebody in there who's going to score us a few goals. We've had Klitsch this year who scored us them goals, but he's not. He's a midfielder. He's not. The one in, yeah, not, yeah. not the one in front so I think Izzy Brown will come in and, and, and potentially take that on and he could get us 10 goals in the second part of the season which could be all important yeah definitely a few other points on Facebook Jeff's come on talked about a new keeper in January we've already discussed uh, and he's also talked about a few at the back as it looks <coughs> shaky um, I think up to up to West Brom we look fairly solid to be fair we weren't conceding mm. massive amounts of goals I think no. and like we talked about last week's show yeah West Brom was a real kick in the um, in the jewels but a couple of their goals, you know, a clicks mistake, a lucky bounce here. I know it's it's all right sounding, you know, fortuitous now, but you know, Gale gets a lucky bounce off at back of Cooper's back. I personally, although we do look a bit thin on the ground in terms of centre def uh, central defenders, if he's happy, Mr. Bielsa, that he's got enough defensive cover, I'm happy. I think the only issue we've got there now is that Ailing would go back in there and Berardi would go back in there, both injured. Both injured. Yeah, yeah, that that, that's that's, problem, that's yeah. the only issue we've got really with that centre half position at this present moment in time. You know, Jansen's come back obviously to get treatment and things. You know, we do need him fit. Um, you know, we need Cooper to be fit. You know, we we need we need our core players now to be to be fit for the rest of the season. You yeah, know that yeah. you know that that core really is your keeper, your your two centre halves, your your centre midfielders. And your people up front, you know, 
the rest of them, to a certain point, you can play around where you can bring young Shackleton in down the right hand side because I think he's done really well this year when he's coming. You know, you could bring Clark in as well. You could bring the younger kids coming through a little bit more where they're out of that central area which is where spiny your team yeah it? which yeah. is where the important part is you know Phillips is a massive part to that um, and I think at the minute if we have a problem there I think you'd find that Phillips will be the one who most likely end up being at centre half or he brings somebody like Shaughnessy or somebody from the you know from behind the scenes who we haven't seen all year into that position because I can't really think of anybody else who's well there isn't who, who can play centre half like that's, you, that's the issue like you say <laughs> at the beginning of the season you had Janssen and Cooper as you well Berardi and Cooper mm. actually was the yeah, starter. Yeah, yeah. You know, twelve months ago, if you'd have said Berardi's going to be your starting centre half, you'd have been laughed mm. la- laughed out of the place because you, you, I mean, he did he did fantastically well in that job, but he was a fullback. Yeah, and in fact, he, he, a right back really. Some people questioned him when he was playing left back. So it, it, it we said it before the season. We all recognised we personally, if we were in that position, would go out and get another centre half. He didn't want that. Mm. Um, if by January transfer window when he's going to be have an option to go out and get someone if Aylin and Berardi are back he probably won't mm. but you still we're still very very light yeah definitely I think um, going on to back on first but Rick Kerr Bamford could be a beast for us if he lands on his feet at Leeds yeah as opposed to landing on his knee because that causes problems <laughs> off time uh, Saiz will be a Leeds legend if he just needs a bit more time and experience of English football I um, have yeah. my own personal opinion on this. Well, he's, he's been here for how, how many years? He's been here a couple of years now, hasn't he? And yeah. you know, I, I look back at we we talked about this when we played Wolves last year, and we had a. I was up in one of the boxes, and me and Steve Odds were up there, and we were. Odds was asking me the questions, and we we said it as soon as the goal went in. It was the second goal, and he went in, and he went in with his foot up instead of his head, and he started waving around and stopped. Started waving around, throwing his fingers up to get a card and all that kind of stuff went off and scored it was the second goal you know there was a bit of a mistake from Peacock Farrell after that but you know you could see him and you just thought he should be running back he should be that was, that's, that team which played against Wigan we go back to that and there were seven of them around, around Windass and that was that was a Bielsa trait yeah yeah Sayers itself comes in there and he, he was still in the same position now I watch him I might watch him slightly different to other people and he's still got to prove it to me because he sits in an area which he doesn't really move that much from. You know, he's got great attributes. Don't get me wrong, he's got, he could be world class. He's overweight, he ain't fit enough, and he can't, so he can't last 90 minutes. So, they're facts. You watch a game on a, on a Saturday, they're facts. That's why he's not playing all the time. That's why he's not playing at this present moment in time. That's why Klitsch is playing, that's why Phillips is playing, that's why Anendez is coming in and playing, that's why he's coming on for maybe 20 or 30 minutes. You know, and Bielsa needs him to be fit. You know, he came back unfit. You know, I know for a fact he came back unfit. He was the, he was the biggest guy there, but he does it. He, he, you go back to last year again. He did it at the start of the season. He did it at the end of the season. When it's cold and it's wet and it's miserable, these foreigners who we've got in two, three, four years ago haven't really done it for us. Now, this year, I think they will do it for us because we've got a manager who won't take anything less. And I think that's what we're seeing again with Saez. I just don't think he's given us that little bit more than we want. For me, I need I need Saez to be scoring ten goals a season. He has to be scoring ten goals a season. Hernandez, how many goals is you know Hernandez is scoring? How many is he setting up? How many how many goals is is Saez setting up? How many goals is he actually scoring? There's not a lot. So what's he what's he actually give too much? What's he give to that team when he's not right on the ball? But doesn't he occupy a lot of opposition midfielders? We've seen we've seen a lot of our opponents kind of. You, you talk about his probably the best time in a lead shirt beginning of last season when he first came in yep. when nobody knew anything about him um, I think a lot of managers and a lot of teams have switched on to, to the way he plays I think I think he does definitely benefit from being in a, in a team with Hernandez because I think they, they link up well and the if he is getting marked out of the game which he, he has done so far this season that gives that frees up a heck of a lot more space for Hernandez um, the big part of when Hernandez has come back, he's actually lost his place to Forshaw. So they're not actually they haven't played a great. Di- mm. Well, they did play a, a bit at the beginning of the season when we, we, we were winning games. So I, I see what you. Wh- I where get you're coming that. From and, I, and I know he hasn't 
put in a lot of uh, assists and, and he certainly doesn't score enough. He seems, for me, he do, people say he doesn't shoot, he does, but he just he shoots a bit late. And he's, he's all, if you look at his shooting stats, they're always blocked. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have a strike on him. Mm. It's, it's the intricate little passes which he's wanting to do. As I say, don't get me wrong, it, when he's on form, he's great. But if I was another manager and I was coming to Ellen Road and he was playing, I'd get somebody in and go, give him a good kick. Give him a couple of kicks straight away. He won't come back. Oh, they do that. That's and that's what Birmingham did. But that's exactly, he gets kicked a lot. But that's exactly what's happened. Then yeah, he goes yeah. out of the game a little bit and he drifts then. He's, he'll start drifting further and further back. When we want him to be drifting the other way, we want him yeah. to be up top. We don't want him to be drifting. I'm quite happy when he does all his flashy stuff in their half. When he does his flashy stuff in our half, it gives you kittens because he's trying it when people have gone forward and the easy pass is there. I think he. I think also he, he gives the pass that little bit too late as well sometimes. He just has that extra touch when it should be a bit quicker. Get it out there, get it first time, it's there to be done. He takes one, two, three touches, that kind of space just closes in for that, that mm. player who's there. And I don't know, I just, I think he's got the capabilities of being a fantastic football player for us and a massive influence in this season. Um, but his attitude has to be right. He's not. I don't think he's playing because his attitude, maybe off the off the pitch, isn't right. Maybe his his attitude to his fitness, his attitude to his to his eating plans, his attitude to his drinking plans, wherever they will be, which they'll all have, aren't as disciplined as what Bielsa wants. Mm. Um, and he wants a bit more of a disciplined team in there. And I do think we're a bit more solid when we don't have size because I think there's, I think the break on is a little bit through size a little bit. Um, but also then when size comes on, I think he gives us a lot when he comes on for that yeah, 20, yeah. 30 minutes because it's like the energy and he wants to prove something wrong, right to the to the fans and to, to the management and everything else. But I think he's, he's more of an impact player at this present moment in time for Leeds than he is of a starting player for Leeds at this present moment in time. That's, that's my opinion on him. I think that, you know, the petulance which came out last year a, a lot when he got brought off um, and kicking things, well, he's bringing you off because there's three minutes left. I think we saw it early in the season. It was two or three minutes left, and he's kicking the, the kicking the wall, and he's throwing his boots down, and all that kind of stuff. He says, "He's brought you off because we're two one up, and we want to win the game. He's not brought you off because you, you you played rubbish, you played well, but he's brought you off because we want to win the game. And that petulance we don't want to see around the club. We want a togetherness. We talked about it at the start. That togetherness needs to be there. And there's there's something not right. I don't think with Saez. I, I really do. I think he's a fantastic player. Don't get me wrong, but I would expect more." from Sayers than what we're actually getting I'd expect more goals I'd expect more assists from that side of it and I think that's what's letting him down at the minute mm. Young Ben you have an opinion on uh, Samuel Sayers? <coughs> it's just his all round attitude for me like you quite rightly said he's very he seems very sluggish at times um, I don't know it's a, it's a weird one because like he said when he first came on <coughs> the team when, uh, when he came on for the cup game he scored a hat trick didn't he and he's Newport set, County yeah, yeah. set Say on fire, everyone got excited, and quite rightly so, because he's talented. But you think you've said it before, it's you've got to question his attitude. You look at clubs where he's been, Atletico, Madrid, and places like that, you've got to question his attitude. You've got to wonder why he's kind of not made that grade over in Spain, why he's had to come over here, and you know, what what's he got to do to really prove himself? Like you said, does it score goals? Does it set up goals? Look at how many goals he's scored. How many goals has he scored? I think it's for Leeds United. Five, five, maybe and six. one of them was a hat trick against Newport County. Newport yeah, County. Exactly. Yeah. So let's be realistic. You know, it's three goals against Newport County, and scoring two other goals in his eighteen months that he's been at Leeds United, that ain't good enough for a number no. ten. And that's that's the reality of it. We want more. We need more from him. Um, and as I say, he's a great player. He's got great attributes, but that one bit which we need from that number 10 role at Leeds United at this present moment in time is goals, because Rufi can't give us these goals. He's not going to go and score us 30, 35 goals this year. We need we need other people to come in, and we need all our midfielders to come in. You know, Phillips came in last year, he, he gave us five or six goals, which was unusual. You know, this year we've got Klitsch who's come in with, with the goals and stuff. But yeah, Sayers has scored five goals, I think. I, I believe it is five goals. Yeah, I think you're right. And he's got five goals in his whole time he's been at Leeds United, and, and one of them was a hat trick against Newport, Newport County. County. Now, is that good enough for a player in the Championship at this present moment in time? No, and it's a strange one. It's a position where we've got quite a lot of talent. You know, you've got Hernandez player there, you've got Baker, <coughs> you've got Click. So you kind of think, right, he's got this experience, Ted, that he can learn from, and he's got this talented youngster that could be pushing him for his place, yet you don't see any change in attitude. It's just the same kind of player we see mm. every game. And I agree, but I do think that 
if he can learn something from Hernandez and he can get something from this competition from Baker, then we can see a completely different player. But it's all down to him, it's all down to the attitude and it's all you know, how he how he takes it on, I suppose. Uh, eight in total, four in league, four in cup all last year, for obvious reasons. Um, he scored yeah. one in cup this year. He scored against Bolton, didn't he? Not according to Wikipedia. Hold on. No, of course, uh, that's reliable. Bamford and Saez. Yes, he did, actually, yes. So, yeah, it's not obviously greatly reliable. So, at, so actual league games, then he's, he's scored... Four, four goals four league in, goals. in the 18 months he's yeah, been here four yeah. goals, yeah. you know so again you know just for me as I said these are, these are statistics statistics which you need to be as a number 10 need to be better no need, I, need, I need agree. to be better you know you go to other clubs and that's that's a big <clears> thing it's getting them them guys in there Izzy Brown when he was at Uddersfield in the, in the championship I think he scored 10 or 12 goals that year mm. you know so again it's like you need somebody in that position to, to, to create and give us more goals from the position which which they're, which they're playing because as I say you know Klitschy this year has got what five he's six goals five I think yeah. yeah so he's got them you know he's played the most like the same amount of games so he's given us more goals this mm. year than what you know we want Phillips I, I don't think we're going to get many goals from Phillips it's going to be a worldie no. of some sort he should have <laughs> scored the other week against whenever it was when he got pushed over uh, when we had the um that rubbish ref um, <laughs> we won't say anymore Former shit yeah. um, winner. you know yeah. um, you know so this is a, this is the thing and I, and we have got competition in them places which I think is good and I yeah, think yeah. that's why we've not got size in the team at this present moment in time and that's probably why we're looking at Izzy Brown mm. you know why, or why we brought Izzy Brown in, in the first like, place we, mm. we did see this we, we kind of thought that Izzy Brown was a, a we'll get six months six, you know half the season really till Christmas we'll get Sayers getting the best out of him and I think Izzy Brown will then come in for the second part of the season and, and really and really yeah. push yeah. Uh, you know mm -hmm. push Saez out of that that position and we will you know we will go forward from there you know I think Izzy Brown's a great signing for us I think it's a, 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 an intent from the club early doors uh, to bring him in get him fit get him integrated with the players um, already he seems to be one of the lads already which which is great you know now we just need in his game time I'd agree with that. I reckon we'll probably see a few under, a few more under twenty three appearances for him, and probably pushing up towards ninety minutes, um, and then hopefully see him, you know, knocking on the first team door. Uh, moving on ever so slightly, then Bristol City back at Ellen Road on Saturday, thirteenth uh, in the Championship, struggling a little bit. Uh, Gary Johnson, uh, former shit house of the week um, nominee, um, I think he actually won it last week, didn't he? Did we give it him? I can't remember. Can't remember. We gave it to him. Slept since then, but. Um, yeah, they've had a little bit of an up and down season. He's been under a fair bit of pressure. Um, what would you expect from the game Saturday then? Because uh, obviously we're coming off the back of a disappointing performance, um, taking the result away from it. The performance wasn't good enough from from quite a few individuals, in my opinion. Um, so what, we ex what what would you like to see from the game Saturday? Obviously, Leeds victory is up there, but <laughs> in terms of in terms of I think after for me personally after the performance at West Brom. A performance is, is is the top of my list. Yeah. Following that, three points is is, is the minimum. Course. You'd like to see them come out like they did at the start of the season against Stoke and against Derby. Yeah. Just really come out and get them. And, and Wigan in more recent times. Well, we Wigan, came out yeah. and got at Wigan. Yes, I know Wigan are Wigan. But up until us beating them, they were unbeaten at all. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Wigan are Wigan. But they were and, that, and that's the whole thing. I think those two games were, were big games. You know, I thought the West Brom... I thought West Brom were very good. Yeah, I, I have to say. I thought West Brom were were stronger they were quicker they were first to every second ball um, and things but the you know I'd have most likely taken three points out of them two games I think you know I'd have ideally wanted four points you know but a win and a loss two away games um, you know as you say we're going to have not lost at home before we beat them mm. first time we've come back from being down as well for a long time mm. uh, to go and win a game um, I think these next two games are massive um, I'm not bothered about the forms. It's not about the performance for me. This is all about winning. We're at that time now where it's about winning football matches um, and that win winning mentality. You know, we've got a full house here on uh, on Saturday. You know, we we don't. The crowd are going to go out. We're way happy. I have this argument with a few people uh, before. You know, what would you rather have a performance and a loss or a or a crap performance but a win? You know, it's <laughs> for me. Have this exact you know, for, for me, it's all about the win. It's all about the three points, and that's what every professional footballer will ever say. Don't get me wrong. If you get three points, generally you're going to get a bit of performance as well. Yeah. Um, but these next two games, we have to. I think we have to be bringing, um, you know, six points uh, from them, and then we've got the big one then at Sheffield United away, um, which is a big game, but it'll put us in a really good position. This league is mental. You know, you look at that West Brom result. You know, Derby, 
beat West Brom 4-1, we beat them 4-1. I know that was going around, then they yeah. beat us 4-1. It's, I think the problem for us against West Brom, more than anything, I think the timings of the goals and how the goal, first and second goal kind of came about. A couple yeah. of mistakes, you know, the wrong times, which just didn't, you know, help us in any way, shape or form. Um, I saw that I saw that game really as a, I must admit, for the first 35, 40 minutes, it was going to be a nil-nil game. I didn't think anybody was going to score and have a chance. You know, I thought it was very end-to-end, but I didn't see that many chances coming from it. They but. did what we've struggled to do this year, which is they were just clinical. Mm. When they broke, like you say, when they broke on us, they scored. Yeah, and it's and it's what we've struggled since since those first kind of wins, the the derby and the Stoke and and, and so on and so forth, and the Norwich. We've struggled. We've had a lot of the ball. You know, created a lot of chances, created or, or had a lot of possession in that in that final third, and not being clinical, and not really not really creating the chances to be honest. And that's what I want out of this Bristol City. Just like I say, straight from the traps. I don't, I don't think we'll see a, a game as open from uh, certainly not Ellen Road from from the first whistle as we did against Stoke and and Derby at the beginning of the season no. because the, Bristol are going to come and, and and set up fairly deep. I, I should imagine. Well, just looking at the last game against Preston Raggy, just to back that up, they um, played five three two. So right. we're back five. Yeah, so a, b- a bit similar to what Middlesbrough, Middlesbrough did and, and, and strangled it. Whereas I don't think they've got the defensive capabilities that that that, that, that Middlesbrough team have. So. I would like to see us from the off take the initiative and just be clinical and yeah. just and create more clear cut chances and and we'll put we'll put a couple of them away. Going back to West Brom, their wingers Matt Phillips, Harvey Barnes, whenever they picked up the ball, they were positive. They're driving mm-hmm. at people, trying to take people on, trying to get shots off, and that's where I've been a little bit critical of Alioski, Jack Harrison. Uh, I don't really class Hernandez as a winger. I see him more as yep. a, a sort of inside forward I know that's very cliche in football manager terms nowadays but he is someone who looks to come in off the wing to allow the overlap to then create something inside I like that yeah, yeah. thank you yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, false nine well, who's going to play no, false nine no yeah. false nine <laughs> uh, but, uh, but a little bit of me wants to see uh, that positivity from whoever's playing in the wide positions barring Hernandez because I don't think he is that type of player Jack Clark but, uh, but Jack Clark yeah, massively Jack, yeah. well the thing is Jack Clark has given us that when he's come on well, like every a, time a, a, a I, I, fearless I would, yeah, I, I, I would put him on I, I, I saw him pre-season I thought he was great pre-season I think he's got a big future for Leeds at some point yeah. particularly in this season as well yeah. you know, he came on the last game at home and he was um, you know I won't say he changed everything what was going on but he gave us something totally different he gave us pace direct to, you know very direct um, you know you go back to the kid at um, at West Brom the, the left winger in particular who by all accounts was signing for us and he picked, know, he in, picked in the a number of, by all accounts yeah, yeah. so you know he would have been a great signing for us because he was he was fantastic but then he looked quite inconsistent as well yeah. you know and I think that's the thing the, an interesting stat from Alioski side of it is you know we, we, we kind of watch Alioski and stuff but he he is actually I think he's the third most creative goal scoring chances in the league yeah he is now I wouldn't have put that down to Alioski, you know, and that's most likely why he keeps him on the pitch, um, you know, because again he's another person potentially who doesn't actually give us too much. He's not a fast winger or anything else, but obviously he is. He's creating a lot of chances for us, and you're absolutely right. You know, we we're, we're creating some. I think we're creating quite a few chances, particularly in that area. But a lot of teams do come and just like right, we'll put the back five down. You've got to get through us. Yeah, defeat us. Yeah. Now that's when that's when for me that's when Sayers comes on. And can potentially break them them yeah. teams down yeah. in the second half, where he's got that pace and he's got that attitude where he wants to go and to break these teams down. Um, but we, you know, I think we're creating a few, and particularly at home, we're creating the chances, but we're just not scoring them. I think someone's going to get proper done over at Ellen Road. Yeah, we've point. been saying it for a few yeah. weeks. You Somebody's going to get a good idea. Yeah, some point. and you know, we need that, but we need it consistently. You know, because we are definitely playing well enough to do that. We we've had the most possession in every game we've played. Yeah, the ball retention is fantastic. Um, you know, throughout the whole of the team, you know, so we're creating and we we keep an older ball. We just need to be a bit more penetrating. And again, we come back to that Hernandez role, that ten role as such a little bit. You know, that direct, uh, you know, from the wings which we're coming from because he wants to bring Harrison in. He obviously wants to. He, he quite likes Harrison. You know, I'd be bringing in Clark down that right hand side personally give him a bit of a chance because he's done well when he's come on and mm. you know give these give this kid a, a chance I think he'll I think he'll he'll do as well down that right hand side and but you're right we need to just get the horrible goals mm. yeah you know uh, pushing on Saturday then two <coughs> positions that'll be up for debate the right back slot 
because obviously we're missing our regular right backs in terms of Luke Ayling and Gaetano Berardi. Uh, Stuart Dallas has had a rough couple of weeks, to say the least. I know he had a bit of a nightmare the other day for Northern <laughs> Ireland, which resulted in them uh, losing the last few minute goals against um, Austria. He's a little bit click esque uh, from Cardiff. <laughs> uh, football, these things happen. I'm sure it won't affect him too much. Uh, and then obviously Pontus Janssen uh, didn't go on international duty, just having a scan. Uh, so looking at the back four what sort of expected lineup do we see Raggy do you think we'll see Janssen or are we going to be seeing Calvin so. Phillips playing there I hope or? so the, the Janssen one was a strange one because I think he actually went to yeah, Sweden they and then flew back the day a day yeah. later or Isn't something like that his wife and kids still in Sweden that could have maybe have something <laughs> to do with it who right. knows uh, I mean I hope he's fit yeah I do I, I, you know I really you look at the alternatives and Realistically, you're playing Calvin Phillips there because I, I, I personally haven't seen enough from Shaughnessy no. um, in that position. And then you're going to lose that screening midfielder in Phillips, which he's done so well. I wouldn't want to move him into that back line. So hopefully Janssen's fit alongside Cooper uh, and Douglas. And um, yeah. it's, it's a strange one, the, the, the right back position. Um, I should imagine he'll stick with Dallas. Um yeah, it, that's it, what I think he will. Whether he should or not, whether he gives Shackleton a a tryout, um, that's that's a real real good debate. He's got uh, a lot of loyalty to his players. He has got that, a lot of loyalty. Mm. You can see that, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see that. So and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see I, I Dallas really at, at right back. I really wouldn't. And, and we've got to be honest that Shackleton isn't a right back anyway. So no. we, it, it's another uh, round peg. So it won't surprise me if he goes to that five at the back. If Janssen's fit, I think he might just surprise us and go to five at the back and match him up. Yeah, possibly. Mm. Yeah. Did it? Uh, did it the other week at home, and you know we played very well. Um, if if Janssen's let's say is eighty percent fit, ninety percent fit, then it gives a bit of protection for him. Um, then that that then does become interesting down the left hand side. Do you play Douglas? Do you play, you know, who do you play on the on the right hand side? Do you play Dallas, or do you play Shackleton, who is a midfielder who can nip inside, or do you risk it a little bit, and, you know, and bring Clark in there and let him run up and down because they're most likely going to put one up front. So they're going to be, they're setting up for, if they're setting up at five at the back, they might be setting up for a, we'll come in and try and get a draw. Yeah. You come on to us and we'll break on you. Well, our three can cope with one. No problems whatsoever. So it's, it'd be an interesting one, but it wouldn't surprise me if he goes, if he goes to a five at the back. Yeah, well, his, his current uh, MO this year has been whenever they play with two strikers, we'll play with three, three centre-halves, if you like, mm. in, in terms of Phillips sitting in there. I personally think with the fact that we haven't got a natural right back at the moment, let's be honest, um, not fit no. not fit <laughs> natural right back I think the fact that if you've got a three at back gives a little bit more protection to your players like Stuart Dallas not not Douglas because Douglas is a natural left back and uh, to be honest I think he's probably the best left back in this league and you know it's easy, it's easy saying that as a Leeds fan but I genuinely no, do without, think without a shadow of that yeah. yes. um, as for a right back if you're playing three at back it does allow sort of Dallas a shortcomings which is definitely in a defensive uh, sort of mindset because let's be honest he's been played out of position it allows to sort of cover for them defensive frailties a little bit, but essentially then gives us a, a better out because we've got essentially a natural left fullback who's who's very good with his feet, very good at getting forwards, got an excellent delivery, and then we've got a winger essentially playing hmm. as a right-sided high midfielder, aren't we? Uh, so I personally think that's what will happen. I think we'll go three at back, hmm. and I think I do think we'll see Janssen play, and I do think he'll stick with Dallas as well. Um, Saez or Forshaw, that's the next debate after we've just had a chat about Saez for a Before, for sure time. all day long. Yeah, I, I know, think I he, he, he's deserved. He's come in, he's done well. He, he shows up that midfield a little bit more. It gives a bit more, you know, defensive side of it to let Klitsch go forward a little bit. Um, you know, the interesting one then would be, you know, if you do go five, where do you put, you know, where does Hernandez come in? Where does Alioski come in? Mm. You know, he's finding the places for, for these guys to come in as well, as you know, to a certain point. Um, but yeah, I, I think that um, you know the manager's been paid a lot of money, and that's why he's the manager. Yeah, We're yeah. out here watching. <laughs> yeah. You know, we let him make these decisions because at the end of the day, it, we could pick three or four teams, and they could all be wrong, and he could just come in and go, right, we're going to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Well, you if know. our predictions are out to go by, um, yeah, yeah, we'll be wrong. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a good place for us to move on to. Uh, it seems that we've talked about the game. We'll uh, have a chat about the predictions. Raggy's Predictor. So over to Raggy's Predictor once I pass in the team pen. <laughs> so Raggy, how did, we get on? how did we get on this year, this week? Um, 
mixed bag to be honest. Um, I had a bad bad day. Guest again. Mickey um, Peaker guest of the week. Mickey, Mickey Peaker guest of the week, which was uh, Michael from the Square Ball, uh, has absolutely nailed it. Uh, and Michael from the Square Ball actually messaged me and went, "I'm pretty." There's a few expletives in there. I'm pretty sure um, I called that. And uh, so yes, Michael, yeah, you did. And, yeah, uh, obviously there was thanks the, for that. <laughs> yeah, the England game, the two England games. Uh, he he picked. 3-0 uh, in the USA game which it ended 3-0 uh, he only went 1-0 against Croatia which obviously was 2-1 so he picked up four points for guests so that puts them right far ahead and in a very lofty position of 26 points we need Mel Sterling on you for, do. for about a month um, <laughs> yeah. Cause he, cause, uh, cause he is absolutely useless <laughs> at gambling <laughs> tell you. give us his number and we'll, uh, we'll do it by proxy every week um, so yeah I picked up a couple I got uh, I said England would win both games but didn't get the result bang on uh, old Ben uh, he, he missed one because he didn't get his prediction in time because he's uh, sunning himself so get but he had England 2-1 on against Croatia so he actually picked up three points there Good effort, uh, but he's still losing so um, yeah 26 points for uh, the guests myself and you are on 16 Gary Jesus Christ um, <laughs> young Ben 15 and old Ben still behind on, on 14 um, so obviously just need to predict uh, the Bristol City game and uh, Andy, I'll let you go first, seeing as you're uh, winning. <laughs> Mickey P, guest of the week, Andy. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we, I think we'll win. I think we'll win quite easily. Um, to be honest with you, I think uh, we're playing some good stuff at the minute. Um, I think we'll bounce back after West Brom. You know, I think that's just one of them blips in this league which happens, and I'll go three nil leads. Three nil. Okay, Gary, I'm going to go in similar vein. I, I feel that this game could be the. <laughs> The one that we've the been one. talking about, yeah. And I, I think the could, route. I think we could beat these four 0 and get Gary Johnson the sack. Four 0 which would please me immensely. <laughs> Confident. <laughs> Confident. Ben. Two 0 Two 0 Two. <laughs> to Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> Two 0 to Two. somebody. Two 0 Um. Yeah, we don't keep any clean sheets, but I fancy us to keep a clean sheet. Are you taking all the ones? Uh, I'll go three one. Yeah, we'll go three one. 3-1 for me and then Ben will have to do it on the uh, it's his forfeit his yeah, chance exactly. his forfeit his yeah, chance why, that's why it why we, we, we were on a tight ship here ship so yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. so that's uh, Raggy's predictor over and done with um, I think we'll start to wrap it up we need to talk about the football league uh, sort of TV naming right, uh, TV screening rights which I'll be honest I don't know a massive amount about because I just can't bring myself to read any more politics of late it seems to be in everything uh but uh, before we do that, we'll uh, touch on who is this week's recipient of Shit House of the Week, the Shit House of the Week award. And uh, unfortunately, well, but not unfortunately, and I think people can see this coming. We're going to award it this week in a joint venture between the Football Association and the Football League for their lack of um, bringing down justice on Charlie Austin for his comments. I think it's just a football association, I don't think. Well, no, we've we'll chucked Football the... League in there as well. Oh, right, okay, yeah, they can, yeah, can, can tarn by yeah, the yeah. same association. We'll send a wobbly finger to both of them. Um, how possibly Ponish Hansen can get done for his robbery comment, but Charlie Austin can't get done for his three and a half minute rant mm -hmm. of why everything is corrupt in football officiating yeah. is just beyond me. I mean, Andy, what, what's your thoughts on that? I, I, I didn't, never really up to now bought into this rhetoric that there's a big sort of undercover conspiracy Illuminati thing against Leeds United but I can't help but see anything <laughs> else than yeah. that at the minute that, it's just crazy there's been, there's been a few occasions haven't they because there was another was it Norwich the Norwich guy swore on TV didn't he and, yeah, but, closely, then, but yeah. it wasn't um, about the referee by all accounts I think that's the the, the, the word in what they've said about you know Janssen um, you know I think the I think Sky to be honest got what they actually wanted from from Pontus that day I think they knew who to go for um, I know they asked the, the club that they can, who they want to speak to and the club have to give the authority to say yes um, my understanding now is that that might be somebody a bit younger so they'll be a bit more diplomatic um, I think I think the uh, I think Sky got what they, what they what they actually wanted and I think the FA well not the FA as such but it's more the AFL um, as well uh, I don't know, it's a strange one. They want us in the league, don't they? Mm. You know, they don't want us out of this league. Um, you know, we're bringing too much money from. You know, there's we, we have more followers watching, you know, the Sky games than uh, than a lot of the Premiership clubs. Um, you know, we have a massive following worldwide, which is, which is good for them. So it expands the game everywhere which they want to go. So, 
you know, I just think that there's got to be, if you're swearing on TV, you should get banned, really, or you should get fined or whatever, you know, I get that. But then, where do you take it to, you know? We hear about, we hear people swearing on TV, on Sky all the time, mm. you know, football in particular. Um, you know, we hear it from the fans, which, you know, <laughs> we, we kind of get dubbed down a little bit on that one. Um, you know, but we uh, but we hear it from players and we hear it, you know, I can remember me playing, I, you know, you'd have a, you'd have the, the, the referee in the middle of the park and stuff and you'd be, you'd be having a laugh with them, you'd be having a bit of a joke with them, you'd be having, you'd be effing and blinding at each other and they'll be telling you to F off and you'll be telling them to, and it's, it's one of those things, but now there's none of that, there's no kind of, you know, on the pitch where there's, there's that kind of connection between the players and the, and the, and the referees, which is what they used to be, and I think that, I think that's come from Sky, you know, you see them all now with, a, with their hands over the yeah, mouth yeah, so people yeah. can't see what they're saying and things, and it's just, I think it's just a bit sad really. Um, but if you're going to punish, punish Janssen for, for what he said, then you've got to punish the guy from, from Norwich for swearing on TV, and you've also got to punish Charlie Austin for what he said, you know, and it's, you've got to have a, a continuity right through the ranks, and it does seem to be that, you know, sometimes when Leeds come to the forefront, it, it was a bit like, um, you know, we got the 15 points and QPR did exactly the same thing, they just got a slap on the wrist, it's, mm. it's the same kind of thing, you know, is there a conspiracy against us? You know what, who cares, let's, let's hope next year we're out of the EFL and they'll have no money from us and we'll be you know we'll be in the promised land and then you know they will be getting proper money for our games of what we're what we're on TV for and and all the fans who are who have been upset by moving the games uh, moving them around and you know last minute you know they've got flights from Norway flights from Ireland flights from all yeah, over yeah. the place coming up to to a game now at 5:30 on a Sunday evening or at 5:30 on a on a Friday night you know they, they they don't get compensated for this they've they've already made the travel arrangements for the games with what we've got and in the premiership you you can kind of cope with that a little bit more because you're in the premiership and obviously the club itself is getting a lot more money for it you know the club at the minute doesn't get that much money for that side of it so it's i don't know it's a it's a difficult one it's i think regarding the players you know in a way they've got to be sensible but on the other side of it i think certainly Pontus side of it i think the i think sky got exactly what they wanted yeah preloaded it with him um that brings us on to the, the news last night just as i was reading uh, about this breakaway rebel faction that felt very star wars ish uh, then adam pope shared the link that uh, sean harvey's agreed a deal for 595 million quid for uh, tv rights to the um efl and sky um i i'm not massively versed on it been quite busy not really caught up on it but my understanding is the issue is around the length of the deal, which is around five years, which kind of ties clubs into a, a deal where my belief is that they're not getting as much money as they probably deserve for, for screenings. I mean, what, what's your guys' thoughts on it? Because this has, this has got multiple facets to the argument, as in you'll get some abroad fans who, you know, in, in the, certainly in the case of Leeds United, think that it's fantastic that as many Leeds games are screened on Sky so they can get access to it. But then, obviously, we've talked already about the fans who travel long, far and wide to come and watch them live, and it keeps getting moved. And then the club are not really getting the sort of financial reward that Premier League clubs get for a similar package. Mm. I think it's a little bit short-sighted from, from the Football League, to be honest, because five years is a long time. We're just we're talking about broadcast technology. Streaming is going to come in quite in a big way, and I think that's what Sky really wanted was... If we were going to, they want to tie the AFL down for for five years because they're, they're scared of that technology coming in. Mm. But um, it, and really, realistically, they negotiating the bargaining chips was with the AFL at that point. Um, so, especially when some high profile championship clubs, including our own, has voiced concerns leading up to it, uh, it it's it's a bit of a, a difficult one, I think. Um, Maybe maybe we'll be a bit short sighted. Yeah. Who, like you say, if we go up and we don't come back down, it doesn't really affect us. But that 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 we want to we want the football you know we want the whole football pyramid in, in Britain to be successful, and and broadcast rights for even for smaller you know EFL clubs is a big part of that. Um, so yeah, maybe a bit short sighted in the long run. We'll see, we'll see how it happens. Chris Maudle has commented on Facebook. Only three championship clubs have signed up to it. Surely that says that most of the clubs are not happy. Mm. Well, I, I, I can't see Leeds being happy full stop, you know, because, you know, we get the same amount of money as what the team at the bottom would get. Yeah. Is that fair? Um, the answer's no, it's not fair. You know, Cellino, one of the good things he did was, was banning Sky to come in at the time and, you know, to to try and prove a point a little bit, and he, I think he did. Um, <laughs> did he? You know, <laughs> let him in at the last minute, and yeah, they had to yeah. rush around to get everything done. But you know, 
I think I think it should be a bit more if you're on telly more then you should get rewarded more you know because we're bringing people in you know it's we're bringing people to it we're bringing people to the table and we're bringing you know a fan base to watch it on Sky you know abroad and everywhere around the, the world and I think we should be you know, as one of the bigger clubs in the in this league, and the big, I would say the biggest club in this league. You know, but you've got your Villas and you've got your Sheffield United. To be fair, Sheffield Wednesday's in there. You know, all got decent fan bases. Um, and you look at that and you go, well, if they're on Sky, should they be getting paid a little bit more? Yeah, I think everybody should be. Mm. Um, you know, and we're on how many times a year? You know, how many games do we get changed? You lose count. There's very few this year There's that you've not been able to watch on Sky. Yeah, yeah. I think, it feels I think, like that. I think. I think. Yeah. This game it's coming up against Bristol City is one of the first games for a long time. Especially with the yeah. midweek red button thing that mm-hmm. they've been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. you know, I think and you've got to say for us, you've got to say to the fans who come week in, week out, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. You know, we're getting, we've got 30, yeah, yeah. 36, 37,000 on, on Saturday. We'll still get 33,000 on, on Tuesday night, yeah. you know, at yeah, a home yeah. game, you know, especially if we win. And it's and it's on the red button in the background. Yeah. Um, so the fans which we've got are, are unbelievable and the best in the land and that you know that's that's the people who need rewarding for it is because the club itself we you know for as a club like us i suppose it's you you man united your chelsea your, your arsenal your, you're one of the top clubs in the premiership you're on telly a lot more well you get paid a lot more to be on the telly a lot more you know the west ham's the burnley's you know the huddersfields realistically do you really want to watch them games on on a sunday afternoon well, they don't put them on as often. No, they've they got to put them on a certain amount of times, but they don't put them on as much as what they put Chelsea, Tottenham, Man City on. And they get paid more money to be on the telly that much more. So I think you just need to be rewarded for being on the TV um, more and than what we're getting at this present moment in time. Because as I say, we've had more games on TV than we've had, you know, three o'clock kickoffs. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, so I'm sure that is going to rumble on for a little bit. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a bit more to be said about that. We are a shadow of a doubt. But ultimately, if we get to the promised land this year, it's not our problem anymore because we're not being there. If it is. Exactly. Uh, so that kind of brings us to an end of episode 34. A massive thanks to Andy for coming on. No problem. Thank you. Uh, it's been in the workings for quite some time. This one, probably yeah. about six to eight months. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very no, much. Thank for coming you very on. much. Uh, what are you up to nowadays? Now football's all done, done we? Apart from obviously club ambassador ring. Yeah, well, I do the club stuff on, on match days. Um, do a bit of radio stuff. Um, I'm doing a bit of hosting now as well with a with a, a guy. So I'm, I'm actually doing a don't, don't get me on this one. I'm doing a Bradford City one with uh, five nine. We do. Um, I've got a good friend who's got a couple of the old players coming back. So we've got that on the seventh of December um, in Bradford, which we're doing. I, and I own a. Uh, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a, I've got an IV clinic. So we've got something called Revive, which is in Geisley, which is a worldwide brand, and we've we brought it to Geisley and. I've got nurses and doctors who work for me, and we put all the goodness of vitamins, minerals, electrolytes back into your body. So it's uh, it's it's good. It's good fun. Perfect. So if you need some electrolytes and all that stuff back in your body after a rough weekend, <laughs> go and sure. see Andy. Yeah. 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 We can, we up, can, up in Geisley. Absolutely. We can get rid of them hangovers. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks to Raggy and yeah, Young cheers, Ben. Mate. Thank Thanks you. to everybody who's took part uh, on Facebook. Apologies if we didn't get to read out your comment. Uh, obviously, there's quite a lot, and we have to kind of steer it in a particular direction. But thanks again. Um, coming up next week, I'm not here again. Oh. I'm working on my Welsh residency. We work. I'm hoping that this is the last time this year I have to go. I think I've qualified in sort of hours spent in <laughs> Wales now to, to be Welsh. But anyway, <laughs> by the by. Uh, so that's kind of it. So old Ben will be back from uh, pirating next week. Uh, we'll be young a bit ben of a uh, preview for the Reading game as well. Yeah, a bit will... of a preview for them. Then we've got a few more guests coming up after that. David Norris is open to join us after that. And then we're open for a bit of a collaboration with Under the Cosh podcast with John Parkin and... Um, and co. So if you if you've not versed with that, give it a listen. And also from a personal point of view, good to see the Square Ball podcast back. I think we yeah. went their happy time yeah. with Michael Normanton last week, so it's good to hear them good guys to back. Have them so back. Yeah, give them a check out as well. And uh, that's kind of it. So uh, there's only one thing left for it, and that's uh, I'll see there. See there. The hero is Carl Shap 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 Shap